Hello. In this video, I'm going to explain how we can compute percentiles if we are given a data set. By the end of this video, you should thus be able to write a Python program that takes a data set and computes percentiles from it. In other words, by the end of this video, students should be able to compute percentiles of a data set using linear interpolation. With that learning outcome in mind, let's first introduce what we mean when we talk about a percentile. The pth percentile of a distribution tells us a value of x that p percent of the data is less than or equal to. If we are given the cumulative probability distribution function, these percentiles are easy to calculate. Recall that the cumulative probability distribution function tells us how the probability that the random variable is less than or equal to small x depends on small x. If we are given the cumulative probability distribution function, determining the percentile is thus, a sim is thus simply a matter of dividing p by 100, we then simply read off the small x value that gives this particular p of x is less than or equal to x value, as shown here. If this is straightforward, what then is the problem? Well, we are normally not given the distribution, and we thus do not know the cumulative probability distribution function. What we will have instead is a set of samples from the distribution. So what should we do if we are given a set of samples from a probability distribution? Well, we can start by sorting the data into ascending order. Once we have done this, we can then plot a graph like the one shown here. In this graph, the value for the data point is shown on the x-axis. To get the y-coordinate for each point, by contrast, I have taken the position of the data point in the sorted list and divided by the total number of data points. If we plot this data in this way and we turn back to the business of computing percentiles, we can state that all of the data points are less than equal to the largest value on the x-axis that is shown here. Furthermore, we can also easily see that three of the data points have a value that is less than or equal to this point on the data on the x-axis here. Extending on this idea, we can attach a percentile value to each of the data points as shown here. The problem comes, however, if we, asked to if we are asked to calculate the percentile corresponding to the value on the y-axis shown here. This value falls between 7 over 10 and 8 over 10, and we thus cannot state what value p times 100% of the data points is less than or equal to. If we are willing to make some assumptions, we can solve this problem of determining any of the percentile values. We are thus going to arrive at a way of determining the cumulative probability distribution function approximately if we are given a data set. In this method of approximating the cumulative probability distribution function, we will start by plotting the sorted data as we did on the previous slide. Furthermore, we will assume that the largest sample that we obtained is the largest possible value that the random variable can take. The value of the cumulative probability distribution function at this x value is thus 1. We are assuming that every random variable that we might generate in future will be less than or equal to this value. At variance with what we did on the previous slide, we are going to state that the value of the cumulative distribution function at the minimum data point is zero. We are thus assuming that every random variable that we might generate in future from this distribution will be greater than this value. 
This assumption sounds rather problematic. After all, did we not in our original set of samples generate a point that was equal to this lowest possible value? This point was definitely not less than this lower bound that we are insisting on. The key point to realize, however, is that we are assuming that the cumulative probability distribution function is continuous. As such, the probability that the random variable is less than and the probability that the, the random variable is less than or equal to a particular value are the same. Whenever we have a probability distribution function in which the probability that the random variable is less than some small x is not equal to the probability that the random variable is less than or equal to that same small x value, then there must be a discontinuity. There is no discontinuity in our approximated function, so we can set the y value for this lowest point in the data set equal to zero, as I have just explained. The y values for the remaining points in the data set are then spread evenly between zero and one. As there are 10 points in total, this means a spacing of 1 over 9 between each adjacent pair of points, as shown here. By sorting the data and ascribing a y value to each of the x values we obtained by sampling in this way, we have created a set of 10 points at which we know the value of the cumulative probability distribution function. We can thus interpolate between the points at which we know the value of the function using the linear interpolation method that we learned about from the video on that topic. We are thus assuming that a straight line connects each adjacent pair of points in our sorted data set. To make the connection between what we did in that previous video on linear interpolation and what we are doing here, more clear, let's put this data from the graph into a table as shown here. D0 here is the lowest of our samples, D1 is the second lowest, D2 is the third lowest, and so on up to D9. Now suppose that we are asked to calculate the P times 100th percentile shown here. Notice, first of all, that at variance with what we were doing in the previous in the video on linear interpolation, we are given a function value here and we asked to calculate the value at which the function takes this value. In other words, we are given a y value and we are asked to determine the corresponding x value. This is interesting, but it is not a big problem as linear functions are injective and surjective and thus invertible. We can thus proceed just as we did in the previous video. To recap the content of that video, I have included some Python code here to show you how we might write a program to determine the percentile. It is hopefully obvious that the first line in this code sorts the data points, which are in a numpy array called data, into ascending order. This second line then sets n equal to the number of values in data. For the data shown on the graph and in the table, n would thus be equal to 10, as there are 10 data points. This next line is interesting. p is a number between 0 and 1, so this line sets the variable called rank equal to a number that is between 0 and n minus 1. For the data shown on the graph, rank would thus be a number between 0 and 9. If P took the value illustrated on the graph, rank would thus be 4 point something, as n minus 1 is 9. In the next line, we take the floor of rank and then convert the real number that is output when we take the floor to an integer. The floor of a number is what you get when you chop off everything after the data, after the decimal point. If we use the p-value from the graph here, this line is thus setting start equal to 4. Given how start is set, the next line is setting 
A and B equal to the X coordinates of the two data points shown on the graph here. As you can see, the value which P times 100% of the data points are lower than is somewhere between A and B. To determine this value, we linearly interpolate in the last line of the code. You may or may not understand this little piece of code. If you do not, take another look at the video on linear interpolation. Alternatively, try to use the code whilst perhaps printing out some of the variables as they are set to see if you can make sense of it. If you struggle to understand though, don't worry too much. You can come back to this little code in future once you are more comfortable with Python. For now though, you can instead use the inbuilt function that is part of NumPy to compute the percentiles. The command to determine the P times 100th percentile is shown here. To summarize this video, I stated that the learning outcome was that students should be able to compute percentiles using linear interpolation. As I have just explained, you can use the percentile function from NumPy to do this in Python. This function uses the method that has been explained in the video, which you can investigate in more detail once you are more comfortable with Python. The most important thing to understand now is what we are computing when we determine these percentiles. We are essentially inverting the cumulative probability distribution function and determining the value of X that P times 100% of the data is less than or equal to. Thank you for your attention.